Hemorrhoids Etiology Hemorrhoids arise from a plexus or cushion of dilated arterial venous channels and connective tissue. Hemorrhoidal veins are normal anatomic structures located in the submucosal layer in the lower rectum and may be external or internal based on whether they're below or above the dentate line. Both types of hemorrhoids often coexist. Internal and external hemorrhoids communicate with one another and drain into the internal pedendal veins and ultimately the inferior vena cava. The two types of hemorrhoids are internal hemorrhoids, which are dilated veins of the superior rectal plexus located above the dentate line. External hemorrhoids, which are dilated veins of the inferior rectal plexus located below the dentate line. The dentate line, also known as the pectinate line, is an anatomical demarcation in the anal canal. It separates two different types of epithelium. Above the dentate line, the epithelium is columnar and resembles the lining of the rectum. Below the dentate line, the epithelium transitions to stratified squamous epithelium, which is more resistant to friction and irritation. Internal hemorrhoids develop above the dentate line, which is an anatomical demarcation in the anal canal. The area above the dentate line is not innervated by cutaneous nerves, so the distension of internal hemorrhoids does not typically cause pain. External hemorrhoids develop below the dentate line, which is innervated by cutaneous nerves. The distension of the innervated skin due to thrombosis, blood clot formation, and external hemorrhoids results in severe pain. Risk Factors Some of the most important risk factors for developing hemorrhoids are prolonged sitting, constipation, and pregnancy. Other risk factors for developing hemorrhoids include increased age, tissue scaffolding weakening, portal hypertension, pelvic tumors. Clinical Manifestations Patients with hemorrhoids typically present with hemonychesia or rectal bleeding. This is one of the most common symptoms of hemorrhoids. Bright red blood may be noticed on toilet paper, in the toilet bowl, or coating the stool after a bowel movement. Anal discomfort and itching. Hemorrhoids can cause discomfort, itching, and irritation in the anal area. This may be due to inflammation and swelling of the hemorrhoidal tissues. Pain or discomfort. External hemorrhoids can cause pain or discomfort, especially during bowel movements. They may also be tender to the touch. Swelling and lump formation. External hemorrhoids can be felt as small, painful lumps around the anus. They may appear as swelling or protrusions. Prolapse. In some cases, internal hemorrhoids may prolapse, which means they protrude or extend outside the anus. Prolapse hemorrhoids can cause pain, discomfort, and a feeling of incomplete evacuation. Mucus discharge. Some individuals with hemorrhoids may experience a mucus discharge from the anus, which can cause irritation. Difficulty cleaning after bowel movements. Hemorrhoids can make it challenging to effectively clean the anal area after a bowel movement, leading to hygiene issues. Grading of internal hemorrhoids. Grade 1 internal hemorrhoids. Palpation findings. Hemorrhoids at this stage tend to bleed, but do not prolapse, protrude from the anal canal. They may be characterized by intermittent rectal bleeding, typically during bowel movements. However, they don't show any external signs of prolapse. Grade 2 Internal Hemorrhoids Palpation Findings These hemorrhoids prolapse protrude from the anal canal when straining during bowel movements, but spontaneously reduced, go back inside, when at rest. They may cause discomfort, pain, or a sensation of incomplete evacuation. Grade 3 Internal Hemorrhoids Palpation Findings Hemorrhoids at this stage also prolapse, protrude, when straining, similar to grade 2 hemorrhoids. However, they require manual reduction, meaning they don't go back inside on their own. The patient needs to push them back into the anal canal manually. Grade 3 internal hemorrhoids may cause more significant symptoms and discomfort compared to grade 2 hemorrhoids. Grade 4 internal hemorrhoids Palpation findings In grade 4 internal hemorrhoids, the prolapse hemorrhoids are irreducible, meaning they can't be pushed back inside the anal canal manually. They remain prolapsed outside the anus. This stage carries a higher risk of complications, 
such as strangulation, thrombosis, blood clot formation, and possible ulceration. These hemorrhoids may be associated with significant pain and discomfort. Physical examination. The examination typically includes the following steps. Patient positioning. The patient can be evaluated in various positions, depending on the clinical situation. The prone jackknife position, lateral decubitus position, or lithotomy position are commonly used for examining the paraanal area and rectum. Inspection of the paraanal area. Inspect the paraanal area visually to identify any external hemorrhoids, which may appear as swollen and bluish lumps around the anus. Additionally, look for any non-reduced internal hemorrhoids, which might present as mucosal protrusions from the anal canal. Digital rectal examination. Perform a digital rectal examination by inserting a lubricated gloved finger into the rectum to assess for masses, tenderness, or any abnormalities. This allows for the evaluation of internal hemorrhoids, rectal mucosa, and the detection of other potential rectal pathologies. Valsalva maneuver. Ask the patient to perform the Valsalva maneuver, which involves bearing down, as if having a bowel movement. This maneuver helps assess for any prolapse of grade 2 or 3 hemorrhoids, which may protrude from the anus during straining. It also helps evaluate the rectal mucosa for signs of prolapse. Evaluation of patients with suspected hemorrhoids When assessing patients with suspected hemorrhoids, it's essential to conduct a comprehensive evaluation to ensure accurate diagnosis and appropriate management. The initial evaluation should include a paraanal examination, digital rectal examination, and anoscopy. These steps will help identify the presence and extent of hemorrhoidal disease. During the paraanal examination, the healthcare provider inspects the area around the anus for any external hemorrhoids, skin tags, or other abnormalities. Following this, a digital rectal examination is performed to assess for internal hemorrhoids, fecal impaction, or any rectal masses. An anoscopy is then carried out to visualize the lower rectum and anal canal, allowing for the identification of internal hemorrhoids or other potential causes of symptoms. Inconclusive Initial Evaluation In cases where the initial evaluation fails to provide conclusive findings or raises suspicion for additional pathology, it's important to refer the patient for further investigation. A proctoscopy, or flexible sigmoidoscopy, is recommended in these situations to evaluate the rectum and distal colon. Proctoscopy involves using a specialized instrument called a proctoscope, to visualize the rectum and lower part of the sigmoid colon. It allows for direct visualization of the rectal mucosa, identification of hemorrhoids, and evaluation of other potential sources of bleeding or symptoms. Flexible sigmoidoscopy involves using a flexible tube with a camera to examine the rectum and sigmoid colon, providing a more extensive evaluation compared to proctoscopy. These procedures help in determining the cause of symptoms and guide appropriate management. Concern for malignancy. When there is a concern for malignancy, specific indications such as age more than or equal to 50 years, risk factors for colorectal cancer, or red flags for colorectal cancer, a colonoscopy becomes necessary to evaluate the entire colon. Colonoscopy is considered the gold standard for the diagnosis of colorectal cancer and allows for direct visualization of the colon from the rectum to the cecum. During a colonoscopy, a long, flexible tube with a camera is inserted through the rectum and guided through the colon. This procedure provides a comprehensive examination of the entire colon, enabling the detection of any abnormalities, such as polyps or tumors. Colonoscopy also allows for the possibility for performing biopsy or removing polyps during the procedure. Alternatively, computed tomography colonography, also known as virtual colonoscopy, may be considered as an alternative to colonoscopy for evaluating the entire colon. Computed tomography colonography uses CT scans to create detailed images of the colon. While it can be less invasive than a traditional colonoscopy, it may still require the use of bowel preparation and has limitations in detecting small polyps. Management Conservative management 
Conservative therapies are the initial treatment for symptomatic hemorrhoids. These include increased fiber intake. Consuming a diet rich in fiber helps soften the stool and promotes regular bowel movements. This reduces the strain during defecation, which can alleviate symptoms associated with hemorrhoids. High fiber foods include fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. Exercise. Regular physical activity, such as walking or moderate aerobic exercise, can help improve bowel function and prevent constipation. Exercise stimulates intestinal motility, reduces the time stool spins in the colon, and promotes overall digestive health. Sitz baths. A sitz bath involves soaking the anal area in warm water for 10 to 15 minutes several times a day. This helps reduce inflammation, soothes itching, and promotes relaxation of the anal sphincter. Sitz baths can provide temporary relief from pain and discomfort associated with hemorrhoids. Stool softeners. Stool softeners, also known as laxatives, help soften the stool, making it easier to pass. They are particularly useful for individuals with constipation, as straining during bowel movements can worsen hemorrhoidal symptoms. Stool softeners work by increasing water content in the stool, making it less hard and easier to pass. Topical analgesics and steroids. Topical creams or ointments containing analgesics, pain relievers, and steroids can be applied directly to the affected area to relieve pain, itching, and inflammation. Analgesics provide temporary pain relief, while steroids help reduce swelling and inflammation. Topical calcium channel blockers and nitrates. These medications are vasodilators that help relax the smooth muscle in the walls of blood vessels. When applied topically, they can help improve blood flow and reduce pressure in the hemorrhoidal veins. This can relieve symptoms such as pain and discomfort. Topical calcium channel blockers and nitrates are typically available as prescription medications. Surgical Management Hemorrhoids refractory to conservative management may be managed surgically. Indications for surgery also include thrombosed or necrotic external hemorrhoids. Surgical Management include Internal hemorrhoids, rubber band ligation. This procedure involves placing a rubber band around the base of the internal hemorrhoid to cut off its blood supply. Over time, the hemorrhoid shrinks and falls off. Rubber band ligation is effective for treating grade 1 and some grade 2 internal hemorrhoids. External hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoidectomy. Hemorrhoidectomy is a surgical procedure performed to remove external hemorrhoids. It's typically recommended for thrombosed, clotted external hemorrhoids or for large, prolapsed external hemorrhoids that do not respond to conservative measures. During a hemorrhoidectomy, the surgeon removes the hemorrhoid tissue and sutures the area. Operative hemorrhoidectomy types Milligan-Morgan Open Hemorrhoidectomy this is the traditional and most commonly performed surgical technique for hemorrhoidectomy. It involves making incisions around the hemorrhoids and removing them. The procedure can be done under general anesthesia or regional anesthesia. After removal, the surgical site is left open to heal by secondary intention. Ferguson Closed Hemorrhoidectomy This technique is a modification of the Milligan-Morgan procedure. It involves excising the hemorrhoidal tissue and suturing the wound closed. The closed technique may provide better pain control and potentially faster healing compared to the open technique. Whitefield submucosal hemorrhoidectomy, also known as a submucosal ligation procedure. This technique involves ligation and removal of the hemorrhoidal tissue without excising it from the anal canal. The procedure is performed using specialized instruments and it aims to preserve the anal mucosa, potentially reducing pain and promoting faster healing. Longostapular hemorrhoidectomy, procedure for prolapse and hemorrhoids. This technique involves using a circular stapling device to remove a circumferential segment of the rectal mucosa above the hemorrhoidal tissue. The stapler simultaneously excises the tissue and staples the remaining ends together. This procedure is typically used for prolapsed hemorrhoids and aims to correct the prolapse while removing the hemorrhoidal tissue. Consequences of untreated hemorrhoids Strangulation and gangrene If internal hemorrhoids become prolapsed or strangulated, their blood supply may be compromised. 
This can lead to the development of gangrene, a serious condition where tissue dies due to lack of blood flow. Gangrene requires immediate medical attention. Thrombosis. External hemorrhoids can sometimes develop blood clots, resulting in thrombosed external hemorrhoids. Thrombosis can cause severe pain and discomfort. While small thrombos hemorrhoids can sometimes resolve on their own, larger or persistent ones may require surgical intervention. Bleeding and anemia. Untreated hemorrhoids may continue to bleed during bowel movements, leading to chronic blood loss. Prolonged bleeding can result in iron deficiency anemia, characterized by low levels of red blood cells and decreased oxygen carrying capacity. Anemia can cause fatigue, weakness, and other health complications if left untreated. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.